My hair is pulled so tight, if I smile, it hurts. <laughs> hey you guys, I'm Jen Houston and welcome to Shut Your Cake Hole, where we talk about cakes, cakes, and cakes. It's spring! I'm feeling very celebratory about this particular spring. And I said to myself, why don't you give the people something pretty? They don't need something dark and gloomy and macabre. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I laid on a regular wooden cake board some dried flowers and then I layered it up with a little bit of paint and some resin because I thought that was very spring-like. Although my cake is not very springy. <laughs> I made a chocolate peanut butter cake. I absolutely do not want my first level to be not level because I'm gonna be stacking some things up. And boy, if your first level isn't level, the wrongness of it intensifies the further up you go. have some white chocolate ganache. I think I will make a border. I just don't want my buttercream to do an ooze out. I've got some chocolate peanut butter buttercream. I'm gonna put some salted nuts in there. Let's get some ganache on this bad boy. Is it really a bad boy? Well, it's been bad, so yes, it's a boy. The reason my ganache is ever so slightly gray is because I wanted it to look like flowers bursting out of the cement. Wildflowers, they do what they want. Don't tell me what to do. I'm gonna make some panels. I will use this impression rolling pin. That's really gonna make an impression. It's my little carnation mold. I'm gonna use some cake dummies today for the top of the cake because I don't need a whole bunch of cake. So I do not want any styrofoam touching my cake. So I am definitely going to cut out a cake board to go beneath this. Working with modeling chocolate is very different than working with fondant. When you're doing things like making impressions or molding, modeling chocolate makes a far better accurate molding. And you can blend seams, which you really can't do very well with fondant. gonna make a pearl border. I'm gonna have edible lace be around the top layer. It is edible airbrush color. I'm gonna show you a new technique with how to make a wafer paper flower where each petal gets fried in a frying pan. Take some wafer paper and cut out some petals. Wafer paper is mostly potato starch, and it tastes a little bit like a communion wafer. I'm dipping these into some color water and just basically toasting them until they're dry. I'm gonna take each one of these little strands of floral wire and make a little hook. I'm gonna take all my little petals and I'm going to stick them together. Guys, I am finally done with my spring flowers bursting out of concrete cake. I made a cake platter using actual spring flowers. I've made a chocolate peanut butter fudge cake, homemade modeling chocolate, and these super groovy frying pan wafer paper flowers. So now that things in the world are getting a little bit more normal, if you live in the tri-state area and you need a cake, you can go to sugarandbones.com and see if there is a masterpiece that I can make for you. We are budding anew out of a very, very difficult year. 
and I hope that you are feeling it in your heart the way that I am. And if somebody tells you that beautiful things can't grow from a very hard place, you tell them I said, shut your cake hole. It shuts your cake hole.